All right, Shalom, Shalom. Kahalayim la, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Must peace, love, and salutation to all the brothers that's doing the work in truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother Batak back again through the spirit with another lesson, Lord willing, is edifying. Um, as you can see, I don't have a title yet, but you know, Lord willing, by the end of this video or after I upload it, I have a title for it. But um, as you can see, I typed, I went to Google and I typed in the speedy Renix meaning, and I went to um, look up what the what this see what it says, you know, through the spirit and see if it's anything edifying. I like I like this definition. It says the def the action of getting rid of a troublesome keyword troublesome <laughs> or unwanted person or thing. So the action of getting rid of a troublesome troublesome or unwanted person or thing all right it says phrases good riddance said to express relief at being free of a troublesome or unwanted person or thing we already know where this is going right <laughs> so let's get into it uh zephaniah chapter 1 verse 18 you know what? I'm gonna start at verse. I'm gonna start up because it's gonna lead right into what I want to get in this in this lesson. Zephaniah chapter one, verse fourteen. Because we know that we are living in the days where the Lord is starting to speed things up. Things are moving quickly, and you know, the closer we get to the to these, you know, certain prophecies being fulfilled, and once they are fulfilled, things are gonna move much quicker. The Lord is shortening in the days, like the scripture says, you know, in which I bring it. I've been bringing that out, you know, in my last few lessons uh, about the Lord shortening the days, because that's what's happening. Things are moving fast. Things are moving quick. Esau is um, he's he's bringing his wicked devices to pass. And on top of that, the Lord is going to bring salvation um, once Esau fulfills his just balance, if you will. Mark 13 and 20. And except the ha, and except that the Lord has shortened the day those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, which are the elect, one hundred forty-five, four thousand and one third, whom He hath chosen, He hath shortened the days. So the Lord has shortened shortened the days for the elect's sake. Huh? So, like the Scripture says, if if He did not shorten the days in the Book of Matthew, there would be no flesh left to be saved. You know. And it also says it here, you know. So it says it in Matthew also. So the Lord has to make things move a, little, a lot quicker, you know, and he's going to completely put an end to this troublesome, troublesome individual we know to be Esau. Troublesome. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back to it. Type in the word, click on the word troublesome. Troublesome. It says causing difficulty or annoyance. The scriptures speak about Esau being grievance, being a grievance to our people. I'm gonna get back to those uh, uh, scriptures. Um, troublesome. It says giving trouble and anxiety. Burdensome. This society is a burden upon our people because it's set up for our destruction purposely. That's how Esau set things up to be. So, um, his ways are always grievous. Let's get that real quick. This whole section right here is referring to the wicked, which we know the wicked is Esau. Psalms chapter 10. As you can see, real, real, verse 2. Hold on. I'm going to start at 1. Psalms 10 and 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Yahweh? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the device, devices that they have imagined. And the Lord is going to cause Esau to get taken in his own the wicked devices, man. You know? For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire. Right? He wants to put that device in all of us. He wants a, a society ruled by... Uh, a technocracy I think that's what it's called um, A technocracy 
and blessed the covetous whom Yahweh aborted. So he Esau is telling you on, you know, what he wants to accomplish. He wants to put that device in everybody. Or he wanted to put that brain device, that device inside your brain or in your right hand or your forehead. You know, and he has a plan, his novus order socorium, his new world order that he wants to fulfill, he desires to fulfill. But the Lord is only, only gonna allow him to get so far. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after the Most High. The Most High is not in all, in all his thoughts. And it's clear because they, they put themselves as they are gods, you know. They don't they exclude the real God of the Bible. And they say that they are the gods. As you can see, the iconoclasm, you know, went, that went on throughout history. Even, even to this day, you still got those images up. This is verse 0.5, the point. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. So, puffed at them. So, his his ways are always grievous. Grievous. Let's get that real quick. Hold on. Grievous. Heavy. Large. Weighty. Hard. Difficult. Toilsome. Does, doesn't that line up to what this says right here? Difficult. You know, so that's how Esau, he set things up to be that way, to be troublesome, because that's who he is. That's who he was created to be, to punish our people. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Zephaniah 1 and 14. It says the great day of Yahweh is near. It is near and hastening greatly. That means it's coming quickly. That's backing up that the wet. The time is getting short. Esau knows he only has a certain amount of time. So that's why things are moving quicker. You know, there's a lot of events happening in the world and things are gonna continue to ramp up and get more exciting and more closer to the, as we get closer to the end. Even the voice of the day of Yahweh. Cause ultimately that, that the prophecies are speaking, man. The prophecies are speaking, you know? The prophecies are speaking and they ain't lying. It says the mighty men shall cry there bitterly because well, ultimately there's a lot of misery coming upon those that don't follow after Yahweh by Shemel Shah and that don't believe in his name, especially amongst Israel. And a lot of death is going to come upon the earth. You know, the Lord is going to turn these men into women. They already acting like women to these days, man. You know, so how much more in that the time when all of these calamities are coming to pass? Well, the Lord is causing distress upon people, man. The Lord is going to make your very existence very difficult because you refuse to repent for your sins. And ultimately, you're going to die in them. So this is the judgment that's coming down from the home Almighty. Zephaniah 1 and 15, it says, That day is a day of wrath, a day of fear, trouble, and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. And that wasteness is going to come in the form of the destruction. The Lord is going to lay waste. When you look up the Hebrew word there for wasteness, it's a uh, short, short, uh, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. Shawah. It says, from an unused root, meaning to rush over, to ravage, devastation, ruin, waste. Because ultimately, once the Lord is done with America, it's going to be a wasteland, literally. A wasteland. Uh, shawa ah or shawa. It says devastation, ruin, waste. Devastation, ruin, ruin, waste of land. Now, when you go down to the strong definitions, as you can see. Unused, unused root meaning to rush over a tempest by implication, devastation, desolate, desolation, destroy, destruction, storm, wasteness. So now that word tempest kind of caught my eye because it makes me think about another scripture that clearly lines up with what this is saying. And as you can see, these are the um, different scriptures that have the same um, Hebrew word for wasteness. Oh, Isaiah 10 and 3. 
and and what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far to whom will you flee for help and where shall you leave your glory because ultimately that is talking about what the end of Esau the Lord is finna bring Esau to an end because he's the one that's set up in this time for this type of judgment so the Lord is going to visit Esau and he's going to do it in a form of judgment and he's also going to send his son back Yahweh so let's cover this word tempest when you look it up let's look up the word tempest it's like here. it says a violent storm storm coming up commotion battle hey remember there's a battle coming epidemic plague a storm from Latin sense revolution and from the period of time to period of weather bad weather to storm I was looking for a specific word up in there let's, let's see real quick Okay, here we go. A violent windstorm, especially one with hail, rain, or snow. So keep that word. A violent commotion, disturbance, or tumult. So keep it. Keep that in mind. A violent windstorm. So let's go real quick. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. Lord willing to come back to me. Oh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, because remember this wind, Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will rise, I will raise up against Babylon, which is America, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. And that's going to come in the form of those missile, the destruction. It's going to send a destroy, destructuous, horrible wind in all directions. And it's called a fire, like a fireball. You know, it's going to destroy everything's in its path. So that's what the, that wind, that tempest, is referring to. It's a very strong, destructive wind, and that's the portion of Esau's cup. So let's go back. Zephaniah one and fifteen. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of click, thick cloud. I'm sorry, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh. And you see that happening slowly but surely. The Lord is bringing distress, but it's only going to get intensified the closer we get to the towards the end. And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. That means they're going to be a lot of dead bodies. People are going to just be laying on the face of the earth. They're not going to be buried. Zephaniah 1 and 18. They, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahweh's wrath. So it don't matter because ultimately money is going to be obsolete anyways. Because Esau is coming with that new digital system. And if you don't got that device, you're not going to be able to conduct yourself any goddamn way. So it don't matter. Money don't matter. Gold don't matter. Silver, none of this shit is going to matter. Only thing that's going to matter is you believing in your house shot or not, man. And you putting in, you know, you wanting the Lord's elect. That's the only thing that's going to save you from this coming wrath for the Lord. But the whole land shall be devoured. Devoured. By the fire of his jealousy. That's going to come in what? The missiles and also the laser beams from the chariots. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. A speedy riddance. So Esau is that troublesome man that the Lord is finna put an end to. Now we just look up that word riddance. The Hebrew word there is kala. Kala. Which means completion. Because what? America's time. Esau's rulership is complete. Termination. Because he's finna be what? Terminated. Full end. Because the Lord's gonna make a full end to America. And Esau's power structure, his ruling, you know, 
complete destruction. That's what America's going to be completely destroyed. Consumption, annihilation, completion, completely altogether, complete destruction, consumption, annihilation. So, uh, let's see. Same words. Okay, let's go to the word speedy. It's the Hebrew word Bahal, which means to be to be in haste, to be hasty, to make haste, to act hastily. So the Lord is gonna put you down real quick, like man. The scripture says in 60 minutes, one hour, as thy destruction come. That means the Lord is gonna quickly destroy you, man. Quickly take you down. Light, he's gonna make light work of you, Esau. It's going to make it look easy because it is easy. So the Lord is going to make put us uh, make a speedy riddance. It's going to rid the earth of your rulership and your power structure and your unrighteous decrees. Everything that comes with you, with your wickedness. And the Lord is going to rid all the earth of you and your influence. Um, I was going to get a scripture. Oh, Psalms 11. Psalms 11 and um, verse 6, I believe it is. It says, uh, verse KJ, I'm going to read the KJV, which is on the right, and then I'm going to read the NLT, which is on the left. It says, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Backing up that scripture about the tempest, Psalms 11 and 6, NLT. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur. Fire and brimstone is what's going to come from those missiles. Nuclear destruction. That's fire and brimstone. That's the same way the Lord took out Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, that's going to come from uh, those nuclear missiles. It says, he will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, which is those missiles, the nukes, the warheads, punishing them with scorching winds, hot winds. So that's what Esau, that's the portion of his cup, man. You know, that's the portion... This is upon the wicked. This the this is destruction the Lord set up and reserved specifically for Esau. You know, this didn't happen to no one else. This was going to happen in the end of Esau. So that's what we see in unfolding before our eyes. The destruction of Esau is going to be um, those nuclear missiles, which is a destructive wind that is going to destroy everything in its path. You know, so. Let's go back back to the the, the the first definition speedy rinse the action of getting rid of a troublesome or unwanted person and we know who that to be the nation of Edom right now they are ruling and we are live at the last stages of their rulership and the heavenly father Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is finna rid the earth of Esau's power structure and his his rulership and who was going to take over? His son, Yahweh Shah. He's going to rule the earth in righteousness. And we know that because the scripture says it. And the scriptures don't lie. So, and we believe that. We have faith in that. That's what we're looking forward to. That's why we're ready for America to be destroyed. So, I didn't want to make this lesson too long. Um, I believe that's all I had through the spirit of Yahweh Shah. Lord willing, willingness lesson was edifying. We're going to... Um, Let's see Malachi. Let's get Malachi real quick. We can close with that. Malachi four and um, one. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, which is the Edomites, they're the, they're the most proud individuals on the earth. You know, some two thirds of our people are proud too, but you know, the main target is Esau. You know, and two thirds of our of the nation of Israel is going to get destruction, get destroyed too. It says, and all that do wickedly. Yep, that goes for everybody that's joined with Esau. Shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Which is going to be what? The day the Lord unleashes those missiles. Which is going to come from majority from Russia. And, and, and its allies. You know, and even America's allies are going to shoot missiles on them. You know, something is going to happen according to prophecy that... You know, they're going to, the beast, like the scripture said, the beast shall hate the whore, which the whore is America. Beast, beast is NATO and EU. So they're going to hate America ultimately and burn her with fire, like the scripture says. It says that it shall lead them neither root nor branch. So if you leave, one thing about, um, if you leave a, 
uh, um, if you leave a tree's roots in, it'll grow back. So the Lord is not going to leave none of that, meaning Esau is going to be completely wiped out. It ain't going to be no um, coming back from Esau. Like, you know, one time I had, uh, you know, when you like, you know, when your yard man, like kind of like shave, your, you know, your bush outside, you know, he's cutting your yards and he shaved some of the um, the plants or whatever. Um, those plants, they grow back over a period of time. You have to shear them again. I believe the correct word is shear or shave. Not sure, but um, he had to cut them again, mow them down a little bit again, and they grow back because what? It's still, the roots are still, it's, it's still plugged in, you know? The roots are still there. So the Lord is not going to leave Esau neither root nor branch. He's going to completely burn the whole thing. Just like when Yahweh Shai did to that tree, it withered away, you know? So, Ultimately, the Lord is not going to leave no root, nor branch. Nothing is going to be left from Esau to come back into power. He's never going to come back into power, man. So it's going to be completely destroyed, utterly, completely destroyed. So all of this BS when talk about, oh, Esau going to come back and all this other stuff, that ain't going to be possible, man. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. And it's not according to prophecy. So it's not going to happen. So. With that, Lord willing, this quick lesson was edifying through the Spirit. I'm going to close out by giving all praises and the glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekah HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders who rule and teach well. Shalom.